Today, we'll be discussing on the topic Recommended Dietary Allowance or the RD. First, we'll see the introduction. For maintaining a good health and physical efficiency, the diet should provide adequate amounts of all nutrients. For designing balanced diet, it is essential to know the daily requirement of different nutrients. The recommended dietary allowance referred to the recommended daily levels of nutrients to meet the needs of nearly all healthy individuals in a particular age and gender groups. This implies addition of safety factor amount to be estimated required to cover variation among individuals, losses during cooking, lack of precision in estimated requirement. Allowance for different nutrients have been recommended by various national committees and some international committees. The first attempt to recommend dietary allowance of energy, protein, calcium, vitamin A, thiamine, ascorbic acid, and vitamin D for Indian was made by the National Advisory Committee of the League of Nations in 1937. Now, we'll see the general consideration in determining the recommended dietary allowance. Man needs a wide range of nutrients to lead a healthy and active life and these are derived through the diet he consumes daily. The component of his diet must be chosen judiciously to provide all the nutrients he needs in adequate amount and in proper proportion. The amount of each nutrient that is required depends upon age and physiological status. Adults need nutrients for maintaining constant body weight and ensuring proper body function. Infants and young children who are growing rapidly requires relatively more nutrient and not only for maintenance but also for growth. In special physiological conditions like pregnancy and lactation, adult women need additional nutrients to meet the extra demand for fetal growth and maternal tissue expansion in pregnancy and milk secretion during lactation. The type of activity also determine the energy requirements. The activities are classified as sedentary, moderate, and heavy based on the occupation of an individual. The Indian Council of Medical Research classifies the activity as First, sedentary workers, those who sit and do work using brain and hands. Example is the teacher, clerks, typist, officers. Next is the moderate worker. Works vigorously for few hours using many parts of the body like hands, feet, muscles. Example includes postman, mali, mad servant, housewife, doing all household work. Heavy worker. Those who use different parts of the body for several hours, example, rickshaw pullers, coolies, walkers in mines, sports, sports persons, etc. There are certain general guiding principles in arriving at dietary allowance for various groups as the nutritional requirement of an individual and the dietary allowance for a group of population are distinctly different. Now, we'll see the general principles of deriving recommended dietary allowance. A number of approach have been used in arriving at the nutritional requirement of an individual and the recommended dietary allowance of a population. The general principles are First, dietary intake. This approach has been used in arriving at the energy requirement of children Energy intakes of normally growing healthy children are utilized for this purpose. Number two, growth. The requirement of any particular nutrients for the breast milk intake for satisfactory growth has been utilized for defining requirement in an early infancy. Third is the nutrient balance. The minimum intake of nutrients for equilibrium, which intake is equal to output in adult and nutrient retention consistent with satisfactory growth in children have been used widely for arriving at the protein requirements. Fourth is the obligatory loss of nutrients. 
the minimal loss of any nutrients or its metabolic product through routes of elimination like urine, feces, and sweat is determined on a diet devoid of or very low in the nutrient. This information is used to determine the amount of nutrients to be consumed daily through the diet to replace obligatory loss. Next, that is the point five, is the factorial approach. This approach is used to assess the requirement for different functions separately and add it up to arrive at the total daily requirement. This is the basis for arriving at energy requirement. Number six, nutrient turnover. Data from turnover of nutrients in healthy persons using isotopically labeled nutrients have been employed in arriving at requirements of certain nutrients like vitamin A, vitamin C, iron, and vitamin B12. Next is the depletion and repletion studies. This approach has been employed in arriving at the requirement of water-soluble vitamins. The level of vitamins or its coenzyme in serum or tissue are used as a biochemical marker of the vitamin status. The subjects are first fed to a diet very low in the nutrient under study till the biochemical parameters reach a low level after which response to feeding graded dose of the nutrient is determined. The level at which response increases rapidly is an indication of requirement. Now, we'll see the requirements and the recommended dietary allowance. The recommended dietary allowance is computed taking into consideration the individual variability and nutrient availability from the diet. The recommended dietary allowance takes into account the variation that exists between individual and a level of intake estrogen, which includes an allowance for this variation. It thus am at meeting the requirements of nearly all individuals in a population. In practice, a level of intake corresponding to the mean plus minus standard deviation 2, which covers the requirement of 97.5% of population, is chosen to define recommended dietary allowance. This requirement has been termed a safe level of intake and the change of finding its level inadequate is not more than 2.5%. On the contrary, 97.5% of a given population will have their actual requirements equal to or below the recommended dietary allowance. The coefficient of variation, that is, Standard deviation usually employed to arrive at the recommended dietary allowance is 12.5%. Most individual recommended dietary allowance is higher than their actual minimal requirements. Therefore, recommended dietary allowance is equal to physiological minimum requirement divided by the fraction of the nutrients available from diet into 12.5. We'll see the Indian reference man and woman. The Indian Council of Medical Research Expert Group has given the nutrient needs and recommended dietary allowance for different nutrients for different age groups, for different activities based on the SAFE allowance as given by Food and Agriculture Organization and World Health Organizations. These guidelines have been based on the following assumption. Reference man. Reference man is defined as an adult man between 20 to 39 years of age, weight 60 kg and height of 163 cm and body marks index of 20.3. He is free from disease and is physically fit for active work. On each working day, he is employed for 8 hours in occupation that usually involves moderate activity. While not at work, he depends 8 hours in bed, 4 to 6 hours in sitting and moving about and two hours in working, active recreation or household duties. Next is the reference woman. Reference woman is defined as an adult woman between 20 to 39 years of age, weight 50 kg and height of 151 cm and body mass index of 21.1. She may be engaged for eight hours in general household work, in light industry or in any other moderately active work. Apart from 8 hours in bed, 
C spans 4 to 6 hours in sitting and moving around and 2 hours in walking, active recreation or household duties. In case of children, the body weight of well-nourished healthy children with normal growth are used as reference body weight. Now, we'll see how the recommended dietary allowance of different nutrients are determined. The nutrient allowance for Indian examined by expert committees of the Indian Council of Medical Research and detailed recommendations made with respect to safe level of intake of many nutrients are summarized in the following ways. First, we'll see the energy allowance. Unlike other nutrients, recommended dietary allowance for energy represents only the average daily requirement corresponding to the average daily expenditure of an individual with defined body, size, age, and level of activity. No safe allowance is provided in case of recommended dietary allowance for energy since both inadequate and excess energy intakes are considered harmful. Next, we'll see the protein requirement. Since the nutritive value of dietary proteins vary widely. Protein requirement is expressed in terms of reference protein, which is assumed to possess an net protein utilization of 100 and is fully digested and utilized. Protein requirement as dietary protein are calculated as reference protein requirement multiplied by 100 divided by net protein utilization of dietary proteins. Since the net protein utilization values of protein of Indian diet is 45 to 55, which is lowered as compared to American and British diet, which is 60 to 70. Protein requirement of Indian diet should be greater than those of proteins of American and British. Thus, based on Indian mixed vegetable diets and considering net protein utilization of 65, the adult protein requirement is 1 gram per kg body weight. Next, we'll see the fat requirements. In arriving at fat requirements, the minimum essential fatty acid requirements and the invisible fat content of a cereal-based diet are considered. The tentative recommendation of the Indian Council of Medical Research Nutrition Expert Groups 1981 are as follows. First, minimal daily requirements of 15 grams fat providing 5 to 10 grams essential fatty acid and second is upper self limit of fat consumption equivalent to 30 percent of total daily caloric requirements it should not exceed 30 percent to avoid health risks like cardiovascular disease and obesity it is therefore desirable that the daily intake of added fat by adults should be kept below 50 gram per day Next, we'll see the minerals requirement. Iron. Iron requirements are derived by using the factorial approach, which takes into account the vessel loss in case of man, basal loss plus menstrual loss in case of woman, and basal loss plus growth requirement in case of children. Dietary iron requirements are prescribed at a level of 3% in adult men and habitual diet based on mixed cereals. Calcium and Phosphorus Long-term calcium balance studies among population groups consuming moderate level of calcium indicate that calcium balance can be achieved with intake of 300 to 500 mg per day. The desirable ratio of calcium to phosphorus is 1 is to 1. During infancy, the ratio should be 1 is to 5. Stress Elements Desirable daily intake of some stress elements suggested for an adult are chromium 65 microgram, copper 2.2 milligram, manganese 5.5 milligram, zinc 15.5 milligram, and molybdenum 500 microgram. The minimal iodine requirement among adults of both sexes is considered to be in the range of 50 to 70 microgram per day. However, Safe allowance of iodine is set at 150 microgram per day.
Next, we'll see the vitamins requirement. The requirement of vitamin in adults have been determined either by turnover studies or through depletion and repletion studies. The requirement for other age groups are derived by the factorial method by adding the additional requirement for growth in case of children, for fetal growth during pregnancy, and for milk output during lactation. The requirements of most vitamins such as thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin are related to the dietary energy intake and hence their requirements are expressed per 1000 kilocalories of energy. Now we'll come to the conclusion. We can conclude it that the recommended dietary allowance or the RDAs for short are guidelines put together by various national committees and some international committees. The first attempt to recommend dietary allowance of energy, protein, vitamin A, calcium, thiamine, ascorbic acid, and vitamin D for Indian was made by the Indian Advisory Committee of the League of Nations in 1937. The recommended dietary allowance of Indian have been modified, taking into consideration the guidelines given by Food and Agriculture Organization and World Health Organization and by the national committees in the United States and the United Kingdom. The recommended dietary allowance was revised by expert group of Indian Council of Medical Research in 2010 for the purpose of computing the total nutrients needs of a population at the national level the Indian Council of Medical Research used the concept of reference man and woman. The purpose of the recommended dietary allowance guideline is to inform the people how much of a specific nutrients the body needs on a daily basis. It is important to meet the daily recommended dietary allowance so that our body gets everything it needs to function. Recommended dietary allowance should achieve not only nutrients adequacy but also prevents degenerative diseases.